Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Expensive, too. Oh, and the people are here. Mm. Everyone they could put the bite on. <laughs> there are the Gaylord Depews from Pasadena. Yoo-hoo! Rosemary! Isn't she a mess? <laughs> the race has started. <laughs> Quick, Melbourne, let me have the binoculars. Oh, this is terrible. What? What? We're giving a party after the race, and Evelyn and Gladys are wearing identical dresses. <laughs> I'll have Mr. Drysdale call the moment he returns. Oh, uh, before you hang up, could I speak to Jethro, please? Well, he ain't here right now. He's out giving Granny another driving lesson. Yeah, she likes to be able to get around on her own, so she... Hey, Pa, I think you better come quick. Granny's headed up the front line. Call you back, Miss Jean. That's Granny driving all right. <laughs> Granny, are you hurt? No, I'm all right. Not no more. I'm through. I done give my last driving lesson. Uncle Jed, she's getting worse instead of better. Where'd you hit the tree? Out in front of the Drysdales. It's your fault. You told me to turn around. So I turned around. That's when we walked into the tree. Granny, I meant turn the car around. She was starting up a one-way street. You shouldn't have yelled at me. We'll all them cars heading right for us. <laughs> I'm through risking my life with them contraptions. Too many people on the street driving around that have no business. That's the truth. Jed, do you need any help getting the truck out of here? Shucks, no, Uncle Jed. There's only one end of the lift. Well, you want me to take this tree over to the Drysdales and set it back into the ground? Yeah, now would be a good time to do it, too, while it's still, still at the park looking at the horses. Horses? Jed, did you say the Drysdales buying a horse? Well, Miss Jean didn't say nothing about them buying them one. She just said they were going out to look at some trotters. By dingies, that's what I need. A high-stepping trotter and a shiny buggy. <laughs> you would be trying to drive that truck. I don't recall ever seeing a buggy in Beverly Hill. Maybe they're going to make a comeback. Could be. I've been hearing a lot about there being too many automobiles and how they's causing smog and traffic jams. And accidents. i seen three of them just while I was driving. Is that a fact? I was in two of them. <laughs> it wouldn't be a lot safer driving a horse and buggy. A two heads is always better than one, especially when one belongs to a horse. I just bet they're going to come back and start. That's why Miss Drysdale's buying one. Now, hold on. Miss Jane didn't say they was buying one. I know Miss Drysdale. She's always got to be the first in the neighborhood. <laughs> Where did Miss Jane say they was going? Some place called uh, Hollywood Park. That sounds just like the spot where they'd have a barbecue and a horse auction. Let's go. Now, hold on, Granny. We don't know if they's having a horse auction. And Miss Jean said it's society day out there, and we sure don't want to get mixed up in that. Oh, Jed, 
I feel so grand driving around Beverly Hills in a nice shiny buggy with yellow wheels and black leather seats and a red fringe on the top. <laughs> Whoa, Let me call Miss Jane and see can we get the horse before you start fitting out the buggy. I want a high stepper with long silky mane with lots of spirits. A real prancher. <laughs> Shoes and a halter. What? On the track, she just won the race. <laughs> you mean a horse. <laughs> yeah. Chief, does Mrs. Drysdale? Miss Hathaway. What are you doing here? Something wrong at the bank? Uh, no, Chief, but Mr. Clampett called. Something I... wrong with the Clampets? N no, no, Chief. But then what are you doing at the racetrack on my time? Uh, the nature of Mr. Clampett's call was such that I felt justified in coming here. Uh, it seems that Granny is most... If you two are going to discuss those revolting hillbillies, I'm going to the turf club. <laughs> where the conversation is on a higher level. No. What is it? What about Clampets? Well, it seems... The Clampets want to buy a trotting horse. What? Apparently, your being here today gave them the idea. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come. That wife of mine's to blame. <laughs> now, wait, Chief. The idea has some merit. Are you off your rocker? Those horses cost a fortune. The idea is to keep their money in my bank, not spend it. But, but, but hear me out. I'll throw you out! <laughs> now, you go back there and change your minds and dock yourself all the time you've wasted. Chief, Chief, Chief please. <laughs> Listen to my thoughts on the matter. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, the, the Clampets purchasing a racehorse may have many advantages, both financial and otherwise. You're raving. First of all, it is a capital investment, subject to depreciation and capital gain and loss taxes. Really? Yes. Secondly, it ties in with their, their love of animals, uh, their desire to own livestock. Yeah. And it could erase the threat of their moving back to the country. How? Well, an occasional visit to the stables might very well satisfy their urge for the rural life. Yeah. And you're sure of the tax advantages, eh? I checked with our expert at the bank. And in addition to all this, it is just possible that their horse might win a vast amount of money. Terrific! Terrific! Oh, by George, this is one of the best ideas I've ever had. Congratulations, Chief. <laughs> Just doing my job. Well, let's go down to the stables and buy the most beautiful horse we can find. Oh, perhaps the Clampets would like to pick it out themselves. No, no. I don't want them to change their minds. I want them to see that horse this afternoon and fall in love with it. Meantime, you make arrangements for boarding it. Right, Chief. Oh, uh, by the way, about your coming here, I... I, I'm sorry that I yelled at you. In fact, I think you deserve a reward. Really? Yes. Just forget about docking yourself. <laughs> Thank you. How soon do you want me to come back for you, Doc? Oh, half an hour, 45 minutes. Mr. Drysdale said to give Mr. Clampett a good look at Lady Bell, then we'll take her to the boarding stables. Howdy. What you got in there? $30,000 worth of horse flesh. Hot dog. We's gonna eat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Say, fellas, there's a live horse in here. Beauty, too. Yeah, she's one of the finest in the country. Big money winner at Hollywood Park. Is that so? I won some money at a park once, shooting them little ducks as they go along. <laughs> How did she win? Guessing people's weight. <laughs> Gee, that's a smart horse. You're not Mr. Clampett, are you? Uh, no, sir. He's my uncle. Would you tell him his horse is here? Is this my Uncle Jed's horse? Yeah, Mr. Drysdale arranged the purchase. Boy, wait till Ellie hears about this. She's been wanting a zebra, but this is pretty near as good. Yeah. <laughs> He's running around loose. Maybe they're cleaning his cage. <laughs> Jed! Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed! What is it, boy? Your horse is here. Horse? What horse? The one from Hollywood Park. The smart one. It's out front right now. 
I'll go find Ellie. Jed, you sweet old rascal. You wanted to surprise me. No, Granny, I... Uh... Yes, you did, and you're the nicest son-in-law a woman ever had. And I'm going to kiss you. Well, honestly, uh, must you have You know Miss how Jane. I like surprises. Well, no, Granny, I... Uh, you... I love you, Jed. You darling man. But well, you see, I didn't... And you don't let me kiss you, or ain't you? Granny, I... <laughs> You wanted to surprise me, didn't you? Yeah, now let's go out and look at the horse. <laughs> hey, mister, whose horse? She belongs to Mr. J.D. Clampett. Paul bought a horse? Well, she's a beauty. Howdy, girl. Careful now, she's skittish. No, she ain't. We's gonna be friends, ain't we? I'll give you carrots and sugarlumps. You certainly have a way with horses. I like critters. I've never seen Lady Bell take to anyone like she has to you. Oh, Jess, she's a dandy. <laughs> her name's Lady Bell, Granny. Paul, thank you for getting her. I'm sure I'm getting a lot of kissing that ain't rightfully mine. <laughs> Good chest, don't her? Uh, Mr. Clampett? Yes, sir. I'm Doc Pritchett, Lady Bell's handler. Oh, pleased to meet you. Mighty fine animal. Oh, thank you. I uh, have some papers here that have to be signed. Well, come on in the house. All right. We's all kind of surprised by this. Well, Mr. Drysdale made all the arrangements. Got yourself a mighty fine trotter there. Yes, sir. Let's see your teeth, honey. <laughs> That's how you tell their age, Ellie. I know. Open wide, lady. Oh, my, she's in fine prime. She must have cost a passel of money. Probably. Horse like that could cost 40 or 50 dollars. <laughs> She's a beauty. Yeah. I like her fine. Between us, I don't care much about this buggy. <laughs> no, maybe it's a city style buggy. City or country. There's gotta be a place for the reins. <laughs> this thing must weigh a ton. Take a plow horse to pull it. Well, it's got rubber tires and nice windows. You don't know how you drive it. There ain't no place to sit down in here. You know what I'd do if this thing was mine? I'd let the horse ride in it. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Clampett. It's all right. Come on, Paul. I'll show you her teeth. Well, uh, Mr. Clampett tells me that Lady Bell is going to be your horse. Uh, what do you think of her? She's fine. But I don't see how she pulls that heavy contraption around. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Uh, she's a sulky horse. Well, I don't blame her. <laughs> hmm? Where's the ring she likes to pull? Oh, that's over at the stables, along with the harness and the other equipment. Well, I'd like to have it. Up here? Of course. I want to show off around the neighborhood. <laughs> well, Mr. Drysdale said anything you want. Uh, may I use your phone? Right in the hall. Help yourself. Granny, I think you're going to be real happy with us, Mayor. I'll be happier when her buggy gets here. That fella's having her sent up from the stables. Well, can I ride her out to the gate and back? Let me have a turn on her first, Ellie. I think I'll gallop by Miss Drysdale's and give her a look. You want a leg up? Of course not. I've never needed any help to get on a horse. Just give me a little running room. <laughs> I'm just as spry as I ever was. <laughs> now hold still, Lady Bell. <laughs> Excuse me, Chief. Uh, not now. I'm figuring out Lady Bell's potential winnings. Uh, but your wife called and... Later, later. Now, let's see. Hollywood Park, 50,000. Santa Anita, 75,000. Venice Bay Meadows, Stockton, Sacramento. Oh, we've already won a quarter of a million, and we haven't even left California. Uh, Chief, your wife said that Granny is trotting around your yard? So what? Well, it seems she's riding Lady Bell. <laughs> riding her? Bareback. Your wife ran out and tried to stop them and, and was knocked down. Well, let's get up there. If she's hurt, I'll never forgive myself. That horse cost $30,000. <laughs> what could have happened? She's been gone for half an hour. 
Nothing to worry about. Granny sets a horse like most folks set a rocker. Yeah, but Lady Bell isn't a saddle horse. That's all right, Granny ain't using one. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Clamp. Nervous kind of fella. I want to pick up Whitland. There's your sulky, Doc. Never mind that. We got to find Lady Bell. She run off? She was ridden off. Bareback. A $30,000 trotter? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Jeff, what's this thing? You reckon it's Granny's buggy? Well, if it is, most of it's missing. <laughs> Once, Jethro. Okay. Hold it, youngins. Yonder comes Granny. Whoa, Lady Bell. Whoa, girl. <laughs> What's that? I'm afraid that's the buggy the fella promised you. <laughs> Jed, it looks like we've been took. Well, he got short of the mite on the buggy, but there's nothing wrong with the horse. <laughs> Is he? What is it? I must have rode her 10 miles. Used every trick I know. Never could get her to go faster than a trot. <laughs> is everything ready, Jed? Man's got Lady Bell all hitched and harnessed up. Did they find the back half of the buggy? Well, now, uh, about that, uh, I'm afraid them fellas at the horse auction see Mr. Drydale coming. What you mean? You wouldn't believe what kind of money he paid for that horse and buggy. Not more than a hundred dollars, I hope. Well, uh, it would top that a little. <laughs> Gotta remember, he's a city fella, and he thought he was doing us a powerful favor. Well, let's go look at it. Well, now, uh, what I wanted to tell you was, uh, Mr. Drydale and Miss Jean just come. And I want you to try extra hard not to act disappointed in front of them. All right. Well, Granny, there she is, all decked out and ready to go. How do you like it? Fine, Mr. Drydale, just fine. The chief made a wonderful purchase, don't you think? Sure. Sure. Well, come take a closer look. Sit in the driver's seat. Oh, you'll get a big thrill out of it. Driver's seat? Where is the rest of you supposed to ride? We'll take care of it. Can't even go to the market in that thing. No place to carry your groceries. I'll fix it for you. Now, come on. Look for some good things to say. Like what? Where are you getting, Granny? Well... She loves it. I picked a real winner for you, Granny. You think so? Oh, yes. You can bring home the bacon with us. Where? Where? There ain't even a place to put your feet. Uh, oh, uh, say, Mr. Drysdale, uh, Miss Jane, I just remembered. Uh, Granny baked up some special coffee cake to show her appreciation to you folks. Now, Ellie Mae, why don't you take him in the kitchen and serve him up a big happy? Uh, yes, sir, Pop. Well, I'm not especially hungry. I... Neither am I. You don't want to hurt Granny's feelings, do you? Oh, no. <laughs> How's the set, Granny? Poor. Well, now, don't you worry. Jethro and me will build you a box so you can put your feet and your groceries in. Well, but Jed, this rig ain't for hauling. It's for racing. Racing? Yeah, I was talking to the dock yonder. He says the fella that sold it to Mr. Drysdale didn't do nothing else. Went all around the country racing. All right, doggies, I'll bet you that's the reason he stripped this buggy down so he'd get as light as he could. Jed, I like racing as well as the next person. And I even took some things off Pearl's buggy so I could beat Elverna Bradshaw. But this is ridiculous. Well, the reason that he had to strip it down special light was because the horse is slow. Slow? I couldn't even get her to break into a gallop. Well, that don't make no sense at all. Doc says Lady Bell was bred and trained for nothing but racing. Been in over hundreds of them. Reckon it was your setting on her that slowed it? Could be if she wasn't used to it. Hand me them reins, Jethro. I'll give her another try. Keep going, Bradley, Doc. Are you sure Granny can handle that racing rig? Just like riding a plow. Besides, you wouldn't go in fur. But we don't want anything to happen to Lady Bell before we win our first race. 
You're counting big on that, ain't you? You bet I am. That horse is a gold mine. She's going to win us a fortune. <laughs> Well, Granny, I'll bet you've never driven a horse like that before. Quite a thrill, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, let's go right out to Hollywood Park and enter Lady Bell in tomorrow's big race. Good. We'll have our money back the first day. Come on. See you in the winter circle. Tally ho. Well, Granny? Like you said, Jed, they seen Mr. Drysdale coming. So, uh... A mule skinner couldn't get that turtle to do better than a trot. <laughs> Drysdale. He's already counting the money that Lady Bell's gonna win for him tomorrow. The only way that horse can win a race is setting in the back end of a fast car. You got one chance. Ellie Mae. She ain't got a fast car. Oh, but she's got away with critters. Forget it. We gotta try for Mr. Drysdale's sake. How come? If you know what he paid for that horse, you wouldn't ask. <laughs> Jed, morning, Granny. Morning, boy. Morning, Jethro. You look sleepy. I am. Now he kept me up half the night, walking back and forth and back and forth. Well, I'm surprised you heard her. Her room's right next to mine. Well, even so, she generally walks quiet as a cougar. <laughs> it wasn't Ellie that was making a noise. It was that horse she was riding. You mean to sit there and tell me that... Morning, everybody. My gal Meek's going down the hall and have a workout before breakfast. She's going to be ready for that race today. <laughs> Jed, I don't think I'll be able to stand this. Now, remember, it's for Mr. Drysdale. Come on, Margaret, let me have the glasses. They're getting ready for the first race. All right, Milburn, just let me see. Ah! Howdy, folks. Howdy. Hello, Mr. Clavis, before your box is right behind us. Okay. What are those gentle people doing here? They happen to own one of the finest products in the country. We're Granny and Ellie Mae. But Don's talking to the horse. Here comes Ellie. Here, Ellie, right up here. Howdy, everybody. Howdy. You know, if Granny doesn't hurry, she's going to miss the first race. Oh, no, she ain't gonna miss it. She gonna be in it. What? You know, they come getting ready to commence. I don't see Granny or Lady Bell. She'll be along in a minute. Yeah, they was a little trouble about getting there started with others. Now she comes. <laughs>
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.